Okie dokie. So her move is done, that's discarded. And she's going to target two enemies with this attack. So she gets a 10 XP marker because she's gone over 10 experience. She's going to deal plus one attack to this entire action. So she's dealing four damage. She's going to pierce their shield. So she's dealing a base of four damage for each of these guys. She could possibly kill them both in a single action uh, because she's piercing their shield, and that's for the entire attack action. Yeah. If she doesn't get any bad attack modifiers, she can kill them both in one attack, which is sort of sad for the Mind Thief because he was hoping to kill them, but I'm sure he'll get another chance to kill some demons. All right, so let's see what her attack modifiers are. Uh, and they're both within range three. Good. First one, the closer one, minus one. So that's actually it, right? Four, minus one, she killed an undamaged monster with a single attack. Great, perfect. The next one, four, minus one. Now what is this? This doesn't belong in her deck, actually. That's a um, card from another scenario, so I hope this one's not a minus two or a null. Gosh, darn it. Ooh, that was bad. That was a no. So she actually didn't do any damage to that guy. I would have rather had this card. Oh well. And this card is lost since she used it. Too bad. Okay, so that's her turn done. The flame demon who's still alive is going to go. He, um, it looks like he's doing a melee attack now because it's got a little gray hex here. I think that's how these work. Um, and so he's going to try and get into melee range of her, and then he's going to... Uh, unfortunately, he's going to use this fire against her. So he has a move of three. Oh, he, does, he doesn't move. He can't do this melee attack against her then. Uh, he can't reach her, because it has to be a straight line. He can't reach her with this attack. That's great. Good for me. And so then I don't think he's going to consume this element, because it wouldn't do anything for him. <sighs> That's too bad, though. The living corpse is going to go. He gets to move one space and then go rawr, 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 and attack the guys around him, which does nothing. I'm really mad about that, but oh well. And then the mind thief is going to go, and he's going to summon uh, his rat swarm. He gets two XP for that. Uh, and this is represented by one of these little tokens. I have... I'm using the white uncolored ones for him. And we put a little one up here. And we will put the swarm right here. Because I want them to sort of go after the flame demon and try and deal some whatnots to it. You know, the whatnots. This last one is move three. And actually, he's going to go one, two, three, take that money, and he's going to start going trying to open the other room, actually. But first he's going to do a long rest. So that's the end of that round. This goes down. Uh, she's good for another round, but she's going to have to do a long rest soon. That's really too bad. This gets shuffled, and this one's going to get shuffled. Okay, so I think this is what I'd like to do. I know that there are some frost demons down here. I would like to try to sort of pit these enemies against each other. So I think what I'd like to do with the spell weaver is move her back uh, into that main room. And we can try to attack these guys from like a bottleneck, um, especially because I'm not going to be able to pierce their armor anymore. That was really unlucky that I drew that null card. Pretty much any card other than that null card would have defeated it in one hit. But I guess it is lucky in a sense because I do want the Mind Thief to try to kill it. So, let's see, she can't really do this. She could do a Cold Fire attack. Um, or she could do the Icy Blast, which is a one-use attack. So I think I'm going to do... 
the cold fire and we'll use this one. But you know what? It would be way better for her to use Flame Strike. So we're going to use Flame Strike for sure. And it doesn't really matter which of these other two I pick. Uh, so we'll go with this one. And that's going to be her turn. We're going to use that as movement anyway. Uh, Mind Thief is going to do a long rest. So he's basically not acting this round. But his summon will act. And then the Living Corpse... Uh, and the Flame Demon. Okay. So Living Corpse goes first. It attacks, but does not move, and it's going to take a damage. So we got number six. It takes one damage. That's what I like about these Living Corpses. They just are cons consistently rotting and falling apart themselves. Um, Diadem is going to go next. And she wants to use up this fire element. So she's going to... Uh, does she have range 2 to this guy? No. Unfortunately, she doesn't. So she might actually have to move closer. But once she does, she's going to be able to do a pretty cool ability against it. Essentially wounding it, which is going to deal con like damage over time to it, which... I think is going to be really necessary to kill this thing. So unfortunately, her plan was to move away. She's going to move closer. She's not going to move all the way closer, but she's going to move one step closer so she can use this ranged attack. And she's going to do one, two, three, plus a wound ability. And let's see what else she does. Just the three. So she doesn't actually damage it. But she does wound it. That means at the start of each of its turns now, it's going to start taking its damage against itself, uh, which is great. Unfortunately, she's now in a position where she can get hit with its own attack, which is not so great. Uh, let's see. She's done. The f Living Corpse went. The Flame Demon's going to go. It's going to move to a maximum, but it doesn't need to move because... It has her in range, and it's going to do attack plus one. So it's going to do attack of four against her, which actually becomes a two, which is nice. And then it's going to infuse the battlefield with fire again. Okay, at the end of her turn, I think she's going to do a short rest instead of a long rest um, and get these cards back so she can hopefully move out of there this turn. Uh, but first, the Mind Thief goes. His summon, unfortunately has a movement of one, so it's only moving one space, but it's going to go a little closer to those enemies. And he himself is going to do a long rest, which means all of his cards that have this symbol on them get um, unexhausted. He heals two HP, so he goes back up to six, and he has to lose one card, which is the really tough part. So he's going to lose one card from this deck. Um... I'm guessing I'm not going to need as much movement for the rest of this scenario. And I don't really need this loot. So I'm going to move lose this scurry card. All right, and that is the end of that round. This goes to waning. Nothing needs to be shuffled, but she's going to do a short rest, which means she loses one of these cards at random. Oh, you know what? She wouldn't have taken two damage. She's back up to eight because she negates that damage. So she actually gets one XP instead. See, this is why I'm losing scenarios, I think. I'm forgetting to apply these abilities, whether they're beneficial or not. All right, she's going to do a short rest, and she's going to lose the Icy Blast, which is fine. That's fine. Now she is going to choose to move. And again, she's going to use this ability for sure. And attack! This is going to be good, actually. Um, she's going to move back into the main room. Unfortunately, moving three, but, 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 it would land her right on the other guy's summon. So let's see if he can act first, maybe. Uh, she has a seven there. Um, 
She could do 25 instead, because I don't think he's going to get a 7. No, he can do an 8 at best. Um, he's going to do the one where he blesses himself, I think. Um, no, I think he wants to reveal those enemies, and I think he's going to summon his monstrous rat too. So he needs to move at least three. We can do this ability. But then he's not going to act first. Well, he can do this one. I mean, I guess she could choose a different card. Attack three. That would just wound the thing again. Nah. Because she wants to be able to act before the flame demon does, it, hopefully. I think we'll. I think we're fine. I think he'll move two. Perfect. Okay, so he's going first. Let's see, flame demon. Now that flame demon, it went after she did, so it actually takes one damage from her from the wound. I think. I think it went after she did last round. Then the living corpse, and it's going to suffer another one damage. That's good. Okay. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? He, then she, then the two enemies. So first his summon is going to move one step closer to the enemies. These are automated. The summons just move the same way that enemies do. He's then going to summon his monstrous rat. So we're going to have to move some of these things around. Uh, he, he's going to move first. He's going to move one, two. Heal one, because that's as much as he can heal. Back up to seven. And he gets another blessing, which is great. And he's going to summon his monstrous rat, which he gets... 2 XP for. I'm going to put that there. He gets 2 XP. Oh, shit. Uh, I think he was at 4. He's got 6 now. And then she's going to go. Uh... Hmm. I think she's going to do a ranged attack and then move. So she's gonna go, um, she's gonna consume an element, the fire, in order to get one XP and plus one to her damage. So she's got three damage on this attack, base, down to <laughs> two, so it does nothing, which is fine, because uh, she couldn't target this guy. And then she's gonna move one, two, three. And that's it. That's that's them. The flame demon is then going to go. He's going to attack adjacent enemies, which does nothing. But he also takes another damage from the wound, which is good. The living corpse is going to move two spaces. One, two. And he's going to suffer another damage to himself. And that is the end of that round. And I think i got to get going now. So it's exciting, so I want to keep playing, but uh, unfortunately I have other duties, so we'll, we'll pause here and we'll continue uh, in a few hours, I guess. Hey there, YouTubers. Uh, we're back with Gloomhaven. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to win or not, actually, uh, but looks like we only have a few rounds left anyway. Uh, win or lose. The Mind Thief has quite a few cards left in his hand, but I know that the Spellweaver is going to be exhausted within a few turns. Uh, so it's going to come down to the Mind Thief, and I don't know if he's going to be able to kill everybody. <laughs> that sounds a little weird, but you know what I mean. Uh, he's pretty fragile by himself with him being the only target. Of course, I do have my summons, and that's going to be good. 
So um, let's get everything set up for the next round. Basically, the spell weaver. Let's see. She actually has line of sight here. One, two, three, four. That's too far away, though. But she could use this cold fire attack um, against the living corpse. And what she can do is she can make sure she goes second. And that way, uh, hopefully the living corpse will come closer to her. Or make sure she goes later anyway. So she's going to try that. And then I know what the Mind Thief is going to do. He's going to want to move onto and then off of the door here. Just to get it open to reveal the enemies. Um, and then he wants to lure them in here where he can hopefully push them into these traps. So, looks like his best move card for that is going to be this one. The Withering Claw. So we're going to use the Withering Claw. Um, and then there's really not much he can do. Uh, let's see. If he's moving back out of the way, there's really not much he can do. So let's just say he wants to save this card. And I think he would like to save this card. He would like to save this card. So it's going to be one of these two. Um, and it doesn't really matter if he goes first or second. So he'll just play these. Because uh, he's going to open the door and try and get out of the way. And hopefully the enemies will move toward him. So that he can attack them in the next round. Now the problem is these frost demons that he's going to be fighting in the next room have retaliate. So he wants to try and kill them in a single hit if possible, but I don't think that's happening. Uh, so that's everybody. Let's just flip over a card. All right, perfect. So we start actually with the Flame Demon, and the Flame Demon, first thing it does, it's going to die from its wounds. So that guy's dead. Unfortunately, no Flame Demon kill for the mind thief this game that's fine so this will get shuffled back into this deck and sort of put off to the side here this is done and we still have the frost demon which will be popping up any second now um the living corpse has not had a chance to move yet unfortunately um, but it's the Spellweaver's turn. And I think really all she can do is this cold fire attack. So she's going to target a hex, one, two, three away from her, and she's going to do an area attack right here on those three hexes. And it's just going to be a simple, well, one damage really is all she's doing. Uh, and unfortunately the other one, well, I guess she could... Let's see, what she could do is move two, then she's in range of him, and she could do this attack for two damage. The problem with that is then he's going to get her. He's going to be able to counterattack her. Now, she's going to be exhausted pretty soon anyway, but if possible, I'd like to lure him a little closer. So I'm going to go with the one damage attack. So we're going to do... One damage, minus one, so nothing. That's fine. That was her turn. I sort of expected this to happen. Um, and she's not got, like I said, she's not got a lot of rounds left. Uh, it's now the Mind Thief's turn. So he's got two summons that are going to act before he does anything. Now, first is his Rat Swarm, which is going to move one step closer to the Living Corpse. Uh, the second is his Colossal Rat, his King Rat. And again, he's going to move one step closer to the Living Corpse because that's the only enemy in play right now. And then the Mind Thief himself is going to go. And he's going to move one, reveal. 
and he's going to move back in a second. But let's see what the new enemies are. All right, so we have got two frost demons and another living corpse. The living corpse is elite, dangerous, um, and the frost demons are just, you know, frosty cool, the normal kind of thing. So we'll use those two. And they have, da, 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 they have established themselves right here. And there. That is correct. And we are going to flip a card for the Frost Demons. Yay. Um, now let's see what they're doing this round. They will be moving two steps. So one, two. Not really into range of him. And then they're going to be doing like a sort of an area attack. Let's see. One, two. Unfortunately, no, that's not going to hit him. Okay. Sounds good. So, I, yeah, I think he's going to move back one, two steps. And they are definitely not going to be in range of him. The next ones to act are the living corpses. Um, one step. This guy's going to move one step. This guy's going to... Well, technically he moved first, but it doesn't make a difference in this case. He's going to attack the rat swarm uh, with attack plus one. So he's going to attack four against this. Hopefully he gets a bad modifier. One, two, three, four... Oh no! Five, six. He actually killed the rat swarm before it could do anything to him. That's the problem with having a with having a summon with such poor movement. All right, so the rat swarm is dead. Long live the rat swarm. But at least the attack didn't target anyone else. And that is it. That's the round. Uh, oh, the frost demons didn't actually go yet, so they have to go. Uh, we'll start with the lower number, and like I said, they're doing move minus one, so they're moving two, sta two steps. I think the, the fastest move here would be that, and then that one, and neither of them can hit. Okie dokie. Um, and the Mind Thief didn't do anything with his top action. Okay. And the Frost Demon... They're going to imbue the battlefield with frost, but it's going to go down one. Ay, ay, ay. I don't know if I'm going to win. I don't think I'm going to win. Okay. So the spell weaver, again, she's going to wait for that guy to come a little closer, step a little closer to her. So she's going to do a long rest. Um, the mind thief... He really wants to wait, but what he can do, one, two, three, four, five, uh, he can force them to make attacks against each other, but it's not going to be very useful. So what he might do right now is a uh, rest as well, because he knows they're going to be coming after him, and he's going to want to be ready to counterattack next turn. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do a long rest for him. So, everybody's got a long rest. The living corpse, move and attack. Frost demon, move plus one, attack minus one. Okay. And who goes first? The frost demons. So they've got a hell of movement. They're actually going to move one, two, three, four four, because it's move plus one, and he's going to attack the person with lowest initiative, which is actually going to be my monstrous rat. Again, I might not have a chance to uh, actually act with my monstrous rat, but he's only doing two damage, and let's see. Yeah, just the two, so 
That's fine. My monstrous rat might be able to get in one hit, looks like. Um, but I, that saved me from one attack, I guess. And then the other frost demon can move four. One, two, three, four. Looks like he's going to attack my monstrous rat, too. All right, that's fine. One, two, three, four. What's his attack going to be? Uh, hopefully a negative modifier, but... Oh, actually, that seems fairly likely. Let's see. Nope. Ah, they killed all my rats before I could do anything. That's terrible. That's just awful. At least they didn't hit me. Uh, living corpses move one. And they're not going to be able to attack anybody because there's nobody in range. That gets shuffled in. Well, it's going to actually happen at the end of the round, but I'm going to do it now. And it doesn't really matter which one does the long rest first. So we'll do him. I think I'm going to get rid of... Well, this actually would be very useful, so I want to keep that. I guess I'm going to get rid of this card. Put the other ones back in my hand. And uh, I would be able to heal up, but I'm actually at maximum health. Unfortunately, my rats absorb the attacks. And she's got to get rid of a card, too. I mean, the one that gives her bonus to her attacks might be good, but she'll only be able to make one attack. So it seems better to get rid of that card. We'll get rid of that card. She's pretty much done. She's out of the game pretty much. And well, let's keep going, I guess. Um, they need to play cards. So I definitely want both of these abilities. One enemy within range four to perform move one, because I want to move that frost demon onto that trap. I also want to do I guess I'll just set this one up the this one unfortunately that doesn't let me act very early in the round so that one would I could use just for a high initiative um, this one might be good. That would deal four damage. Uh, it's not going to kill a frost demon. Let's see. I also want to do this attack, and I think I might do this one instead, instead of the move one. Because this is going to be force an enemy within range five to perform attack two on another enemy. And these guys have retaliate too. So I could basically have one hit the other one, and then it would take the retaliate damage from that. That might be a better choice. And then what I would do for the top action is probably this. Get my plus two to attacks. All right, we'll go for that. Like I said, he's not going to act very early in the round, which concerns me a little bit. And then the Spell Weaver, she's in range two of that guy, so she can at least do two fairly good attacks. She'll do these two attacks, and she'll get to go first. All right, perfect. So, Living Corpse, and this one. Okay, so Spell Weaver goes first. She can do attack two, range two. She takes gets one XP for that. Attack two against this guy. And it turns into an attack one. Mm, okay, that's fine. And then another attack two. Um, oh, this went away. Another attack two. And it's a just an attack two. And she's pretty much done now. She's exhausted. So that's... 5 damage, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'll trade that out for a bigger token. Remember, I got 
I have to put 13 damage on this guy. And she's done. That's basically it. She's going to have one more turn where she can take a card back, and then she's going to get one more action. Let's see. The living corpses are now going to go. He gets two movement, so he's going to go just move one. Uh, he goes second, actually. This guy's going to move one, two. This guy goes move... Uh, muddle and immobilize one adjacent enemy. Okay, unfortunately, got to get muddled and immobilized, and that's going to last for my next turn. But he didn't actually attack anything, which is good. So she's going to be able to get in one more good attack, I think. Uh, now it's time for this dude. And we're going to do the Force 1 enemy within range 5 to perform attack 2 on another enemy. We're going to have the closer enemy attack the Frost Demon next to him. And he's going to do attack 2 which is just a regular attack too, and he then takes two damage from the other Frost Demon. Frosty. Okay. Then we're going to do this augment. So put that one on, and he gets attack three against an adjacent enemy. And he gets one XP for this. And hopefully this is going to be a good attack. And we're going to use our Poison Dagger on this. So it's going to cause poison no matter what. And... Ooh, bad luck. So he deals 2 damage to the Frost Demon. Plus poison. And the Frost Demon deals 2 damage to him. then the Frost Demons are going to act. They're going to deal three damage, uh, basically two attacks back to, get, back to back against the Mind Thief. So first one's just going to stay where he is and attack for three damage. And this next one, I'm probably going to have to start losing cards. Attack, two damage. Yeah, I actually have to lose a card for that, unfortunately. Um... As much as I like this one, I don't need that as much as I need some of the other things. So I'm going to get rid of the push. Because I can move enemies onto traps instead. Well, let me think about that. Actually, I might want to do that next turn and push that guy onto a trap. That might be a better move. The trap wouldn't quite kill it, but the attack plus the trap might kill it. So we don't want to get rid of those. Um, and then if I'm using that, I don't need that. So we're going to lose that card. Okay. That's the end of that round. Okay, that's done. Um, Spellweaver is going to do a long rest, and that way she'll uh, be able to do another maybe one or two hits against this living corpse before it dies, or she dies. And the Mind Thief is going to do the plan that I had mentioned. He's going to do both of these, so hopefully he gets to act first. Living Corpse, and... Frost Demons. Okay. So, Mindweaver goes first. He's going to go 1, 2. And he's going to heal 2. So he's back up to 4 and bless himself again. That turned out to be a very good enhancement to buy. Unfortunately, I'm not drawing these blessings. But, still, good stuff, I think. So that was that. And then he's going to attack for 2 plus 2, which is 4. He gets 1 XP for this, and it's a push. Oh, he was at 4, I think. So 2, 4, 5. That's 5 damage. 
That's actually enough to kill the thing, because it already had taken two. So it doesn't need to get pushed, which, you know, it's fine. And it doesn't get to retaliate. So that's perfect. Um, I still don't know if I'm going to be able to kill these living corpses. These are tough. They have a lot of health. So that's done. Um, it's now the Frost Demon, the remaining Frost Demon's turn. He's just going to move one space toward the Mine Thief and attack plus zero, so it's attack of three. Ah! An attack of six. So I get to either lose this card from my hand or two cards from my discard. And I'm going to lose one card from my hand. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to kill those uh, living corpses, but I'll see how much XP I can get. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. I don't need to lose anything because I have the Iron Helmet on. The Iron Helmet says consider any two times attack modifier the enemy draws to be a plus zero instead. So it actually only dealt three damage, one, two, three. He's down to one health again, but he's still alive. Very nice. This Iron Helmet is a good, good thing. And then we have the Living Corpses. Their move minus one and attack plus one. So their movement actually is zero. But this guy's going to attack for five damage. And we'll see it gets taken down to four, which is fine. And then we're going to have her turn. And with her turn, she loses these two status effects. She heals two. She gets her Boots of Striding back, and she has to lose one of these cards. And I think I'm going to do the one. Um, oh, the Frost Demons also infuse the battlefield. I think I'm going to do the one that... I'm going to lose the Cold Fire. And that way I have attack two, which I can make attack three, and another attack two. And that'll be the last we hear from her. Frost demons are going to shuffle into their deck. The enemy attack modifier deck gets shuffled. And we're going to go to the next turn. Okay. Up, 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 up. Hmm. Mind Thief at the end of his turn is going to lose a random card from his discard pile, I think. Uh... Ah, unfortunately the healing card. That's okay. Um, so he's got a full hand now. He can take another turn. He did a short rest. That's what that's called. And, I mean... There's not much to it, not much decision to be made here. Um, I think I'm going to do Submissive Affliction against this thing. I mean, I guess I could try push it, but I think I'm going to save that push for the other living corpse if I can make it that long. And I'll also play this card. Okay. Frost Demons and Living Corpses. They're not really drawing the cards that damage themselves. I'm not going to win, but, you know, we'll do our best. So, the Spellweaver goes first, and let's see what she does. Okay, so luckily I used this ice that they infused on the battlefield last time, and I get to use it before they do, so she's going to suck up the mana, and she's going to do um, attack of three, so she gets plus one XP for this, but it's at a disadvantage because it's at range one and it's a ranged attack. Uh, so unfortunately, instead of that two times, she just gets a regular three damage against this thing. So one, two, three. And then she's going to do attack of two. And again, she gets one XP for this and she has to do it at a disadvantage. So again, if I don't get the plus one, I just get a plus zero. And another, I think it's up to another five damage, so it's down to three health remaining. It's actually doing not so bad. Uh, she's going to use her minor healing potion, so she's going to heal back up to her full health. And that way, she will definitely 
last one more round just as a meat sponge. She's not going to be able to attack anymore. But she'll be able to absorb some attacks and sort of hang in there. Now it's the Mind Thief's turn. Um, he can do Submissive Affliction against this thing. And he's going to do that. Submissive Affliction, attack 2 plus 1 uh, for each negative condition on the target. So it has a Poison condition. Now the Poison condition already gives a plus 1 to the attack. So it's already attack 2, 3, 4, 5. And he's going to get 1 XP for this. So it's attack of 5 without any modifiers applied. And as long as I don't draw a null, I think I am going to kill the thing. All right, a plus 0. Not bad. So it's got... 5 damage dealt to it. It's definitely dead. It doesn't get a chance to retaliate. And it drops a coin right where its predecessor did. Unfortunately, there's no way I'm killing this living corpse before I exhaust. I have like two turns at the most. Um, but anyway, that goes underneath. This is basically done, so we'll get that out of the way. And the living corpse is going to go. Oh, you know, he didn't do his second action, so he's going to, for his second action, yeah, move one and suck up these coins. At least we'll get some coins for this uh, scenario. Uh, the living corpses are going to go. Uh, again, the bottom one's just going to move one. It's not in range to do anything. The top one is going to move one. Well, it's not going to move anything. And then it is going to attack... For four damage against the Spellweaver, and let's see what it does. Three damage. Okay. Um, so I have a choice here. I can do a long rest and then guarantee which card I get back because I don't really have a need for this one anymore. Um, or I can do a short rest and have a card for this turn. If I do a long rest, I actually get some health back too. I'm going to do a long rest. And hopefully, well, the thing's going to come attack me, and it will kill me. So I'm going to have to lose cards to deal with that. I mean, the, my chances of actually winning this scenario are so small at this point. It's not really worth it um, to really put too much thought into it. I know that the Spellweaver uh, is basically done, but she gets to do a long rest or a short rest. She's going to do a short rest. Long rest, I mean. And she's again, she's just going to hang in there another turn and see what happens. And he's got to make a decision. I think he's going to do a short rest. But um, okay. Not bad. Um. And he really has no choice. He's going to play these two cards. Uh, yeah, this is really no way to win at this point. Let's see what the living corpse does. Move plus one. The living corpse suffers one damage. Okay, unfortunately that happens after everyone else goes except for the Spellweaver. So this guy's going to suffer one damage. She is going to heal two. And she's going to lose one of these cards. It doesn't matter at this point. She'll lose this one. And she's pretty much exhausted at this point. Uh, 
this one is going to move and suffer one damage. I'm doing these out of order, I just realized, but again, doesn't really make a difference at this point. Uh, he would have actually maybe moved toward it. Mm. There's no way to kill it. No. He would he would have done the Fearsome Blade and the top attack. So it wouldn't have had a chance to move. He would have moved. Fearsome Blade. Attack 2. He gets 2 XP. So that. And attack 2 plus 2 is 4. And a Blessing, which is <laughs> 8. Wow. Okay. I'm going to be so close to winning. It's so so tantalizing. Uh, eight damage against that thing. It hasn't taken this one damage yet, but let's just count it. And then he's going to do attack two. Um, again, plus two, so that's four. And another blessing. Another eight. Uh, so that thing's dead. It's actually dead. He's still... Oh, we're so close. We're so close, but we're not going to do it. <laughs> that is so awful. Okay. That is really, really awful. Ah, oh, all those blessings at the last moment. Um, did I get... I didn't get my XP for that attack. Yeah, there's really no way. Um... No, I don't think there's a way. But we'll see. She is going to uh, heal up. No, she, she, she's done. She's exhausted, actually, at this point. Oh, she did her rest already. So her next turn, she's exhausted. And we get to make some progress toward her personal goal, though. So she has now exhausted herself ten times. Uh, her personal quest right here, is to exhaust herself 12 times. So she is well on her way toward that. And this living corpse. Okay. So I am going to do a long rest this time. I'm going to put this card in my discard pile first. That's what I'm doing for this round. I have very little hope of winning. It's really, I don't think, possible. But we'll see. I mean... Stranger things have happened, I guess. I mean, this thing is 10 damage. I just need to deal one damage to it. But I need to get it too close enough to me to attack it. There's no... Ah, I'm so close. Okay, let's see what he does. Oh, I missed this where they should have shuffled everything together, so we'll do that now. Maybe if she hadn't been acting as a meat sponge, uh, would have worked better. Move plus zero, attack plus zero. Okay, so it's moving one, doing nothing. He's going to rest. Uh, he's got to lose a card. There's no way. Oh, man. All right, that's it. The scenario is over. He get, becomes exhausted. You! Oh, you! Alright, so at the end of a scenario, players get their XP and their gold that they um, got during the scenario. Then they would get additional bonuses if they won, such as checks from their battle goal and stuff like that. Um, but in this case, all they get is XP and gold. So, let's see here. Chitterfang managed to get 12 more XP during the scenario, which means he's now at level, or XP 99. No, no, no. Yeah, 99. He has leveled up. He's a level 3 character now. Great job, Chitterfang. Hey, if I played the scenario again, maybe I'd win this time. 
Um, and his gold is quite a bit. Three for each of these. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. Uh, plus seven is 25. So he's at 25 gold now. Great. And he's going to go back to Gloomhaven and gain a level. Maybe I'll include that in this video. It'll be a nice wrap up. Uh, the Spellweaver managed to get zero gold, but she did get quite a few XP, and I, she might have leveled up herself. I think she did. She got 16 total. So she's up to 136 plus 16 is 152. So we'll erase all of this and start her up at level or 152, and she has leveled up as well. So that's great. But I'm still losing scenarios. I am not sure what's happening. I am losing constantly in this game. Uh, and that is not normal uh, from what I've heard. A lot of people are winning more often than they're losing. And I started out that way. I am just not winning these days. Um, I think it's because I've got two parties going on separately. And so they're, do they're gaining levels at a slower rate than you might expect. And that might be part of it. Uh, or maybe I just made some bad choices. You'll let me know. So, that's it. We're going to go back to Gloomhaven and level these suckers up. That's going to be great. Okay, so when you level up, here's essentially what happens. Uh, you get a perk and you get a new card. So, in these boxes that are specific to the character, uh, you've got a deck of battle modifier cards that are specific to that character. These are diadems. And you've got a deck of action or ability cards that are specific to that character. And these are diadems as well. She's now reaching level 4, which means she can take one more card from level 2, 3, or 4. So I've got a lot of good choices here, actually. This is a reusable card. Uh, attack 2, range 3, target 2. For a reusable card, that's pretty good. I've also got this Spirit of Doom, which, I mean, it's not bad, but look at this ability. Kill one normal target instead of cursing a normal target or cursing somebody. So the curse by itself is good, but an instant kill... That's pretty good. I could also get one of these earlier level ones. Flashing Burst. I might get that next time for her because it's reusable. Um, this Forked Beam looks pretty good. I like the Spirit of Doom. The problem is you have to set up this elemental um, synergy with it. So what I could do is add these cards rolling modifiers that give her this uh, elemental infusion. That's one option. Also, I mean, she's got... Uh, she's fighting night demons in the, in the scenario we just finished. So they could add this elemental infusion for her. And she's got a card in her deck, I think, already that does that. That has that infusion attached. But for my perks, another thing I could do is replace a negative one card, or a minus one, with a plus one. So if you look at their attack modifier deck, for her, there's a blessing. She's got some that she's already added from previous scenarios. This is a good one, a curse. And previous levels uh, but yeah there's not a lot here uh, there's a lot of negatives here um, so taking a negative out and replacing it with a positive that's a pretty good deal um, I think I would rather do that and considering that I'm going to be doing that I think I don't know, that forked beam is fine, but a kill. 
And what is this? Heal x, any ally, where x is half of that ally's maximum hit point value rounded down. See, the thing is with these cards, because she has that card that lets her take stuff back from her lost file, I could do this twice. Kill a normal target twice in a scenario. I couldn't do it against those, uh, what do you even call them? The uh, t -t -t living corpses. But I could do it against the frost demons and the flame demons and even the, the night demons in this scenario. Mm. Yeah, we're going to go for that card. So she's going to get the Spirit of Doom card and... Eh. What the heck? She's going to get that rolling modifier as well. So she's going to take these two rolling modifiers. Uh, what is this? Adding ice and a plus two. That's pretty good. But she's going to take a darkness and a light rolling modifier uh, and add those to her deck. So the rolling modifier basically means when you draw it, you add that effect and keep, keep drawing. All right. Chitterfang is going up to level 3. And uh, let's see what his options are for level 2 or 3 cards. So level 2, one he looked over before. Um, attack plus immobilized. Okay. Well, let's look at the level 3s. Okay. Attack 1 and then strengthen self. Strengthen gives you advantage for your next attack. Or attack four at a range four and heal four to self. That's pretty cool. But on your melee attacks, heal two with a range of two. And he has a reusable move card that pushes adjacent enemies. So he could just walk around pushing things into objects. Now that's pretty cool too. So this heal too, that's not bad um, because he can use it on himself. He already has a card like this, but this one has a range on it. That's tough. This one strengthens himself. That's not that great. And then the other card was Hostile Takeover. Um, force one normal or elite enemy within range three to perform its turn this round as if its allies were enemies and its enemies were allies. Uh, that's not bad. And it's a, also a ranged attack with immobilize. But that ranged attack wouldn't benefit from his augments. So I don't know about that. Let's look at his options for perks. So he can do, remove negative one cards. Um or start replacing plus one cards with plus two cards. Uh, he has other options, some rolling modifiers, but and he's got a pretty good one, a rolling modifier stun card. But I think what he's gonna start doing is remove the two minus one cards. Yeah, we'll, we'll go simple with him. So he's just going to take two minus one cards from his deck, one, two. And he's just going to put them with the other cards in this box until the character retires. That's pretty straightforward. I don't know what to do with those other picks. I don't like them nearly as well as I like the ones for the Spellweaver. Um... I do like this one because it lets him move and push. I'm going to choose this one. Uh, I mean, a re more reusable pushes are always good, and more movement is always good. But for now, of course, I have to sign off, and I'm going to leave you with my words of wisdom. That's all she wrote. <laughs>